hello and welcome back to Throne Breaker. We go to Dubwar's Abyss. Uh, that's apparently the next objective. Uh, but maybe we should check out the notice board before. And I dare say we. Oh, well, I'll check this out. We really helped out the dwarves here. <clears throat> My queen, this building houses the bank of Clan Zigrin. The banker claims that we should invest now in a few months. Time or <laughs> its worth will be increased threefold. It sounds too good to be true. Should we invest anything? In three months, three folds. Um, uh, it doesn't matter. Like the thing is, either you trust them or you don't. So, like putting in five hundred gold makes no sense. This is a completely pointless option. It's either it's it's worth doing, or it's not. Possible gains. Nope. We move on. I'm sorry, we're not gonna invest. Too good to be true. How the hell do you guys make so much money? Can I just talk with this guy? Riding past a mine, Neve noticed a group of miners gathered around the entrance to a shaft. Frost had settled on their moustaches and beards, suggesting they had been there for some time. The Queen summoned Gabor and asked him to determine the reason for this sitting. He returned after a few minutes and announced the most curious thing. They're waiting for the knocking to stop. The hell? Neve's frown prompted Gabor to explain in greater detail. According to our laws, Dwarves can't go into a mine if there's knocking coming from the inside. We're obliged to wait for the ruckus to quiet down. Ah, yes. Our own miners share this superstition, Reynard interjected. They say the knocking is that of a treasurer gnome, a kind of mine ghost. With all due respect, your miners are dimwits, Gabor said, patting Reynard on the shoulder. Knocking means an imminent and abrupt discharge of the potential pliable energy of rock formations. In other words, you can, a rock burst. Except usually it's all done in a day or two, whereas these lads have been waiting for on two weeks. Foreman's grown impatient. He'd like to send someone down the shaft, have them see what's at issue, but, well, the code forbids us from doing anything of the sort. Oh. Alright, I'll check it out. If in this manner I can gain favour among your brethren, sighed the Queen, dismounting. So be it. I shall descend and see what the problem is. The shaft was too narrow to fit an entire army, so Meave and a small unit of men entered the mine, miners' lamps in hand, and hearts in their mouths. The rhythmic knocking coming from the bowels of the mountains, distorted and multiplied, was unnerving. Soon the company arrived at the place that seemed the source of the knocking. Gabor put his ear to the rock and listened for several moments in silence, then struck the wall with all his might. The wall crumbled with a crash, opening a passage into another corridor, from which sprang numerous foes. No way! What? Spiders? Okay, shortened battle. Is it spiders? It's a shortened battle. Well, Gascon is good. Bomber is great. Really? <laughs> Did you hear something? What was that? My gnome senses are telling me. <laughs> Those definitely aren't ghosts. What the hell is this? Kinda looks like a peasant. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. See what we got. Who goes there? Drop your weapons! Nay, you weird. drop yours! Alright. I won't be doing that. An army's a waste of time for one like me. Sure.
Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. Left, right, left, right. You can actually move the Mahakam Hail in the back. Alright. More shadowy silhouettes. Who just grabbed me? Oh, apologies, Maeve. I thought you were Raynard. Alright. This could hurt. Set them on fire. And, um. I suppose. Bigger they are, easier they are to touch. I'm gonna do something like that. Just so that they stay in the back. I still have to play something else. I'm um, gonna. Set fire to the front, I suppose. Watch your heads! <laughs> Something else. Could be decent. <clears throat> Shadowy figures. Get at more units from the deck. The only problem with that is just to Xavier. Fear not. We shall achieve our goal. Sure. This helps Gascon quite a bit. It seems like like doing AoE on them in the back seems so good, but. We don't, in practice, we don't need it. We just deal so much damage, so that single target is just more worth it. Life at me flowed, now here I'm marching proud. You can just wait. They just do to, die to the AoE, so it doesn't really matter. Again and again and again. Wait, what is in the back? Gotta make sure that we don't run out of space. Who are these guys? Are we winning? I can't see a bloody thing. Well, we seem to be doing pretty well. Uh, considering we are not. Can't see anything apparently. A time to sow. Not a time to die. Hmm. <clears throat> we can just wait. I oh, know we gotta play a unit. Didn't damage me too much. Oh, we can just wait still. Okay. Really not much point. You can even just kill them all. Reynardo does. Discipline shall bring us victory. Alright. My my deck was infinitely better than his. Wait. Stop! Oh, yeah. Stop, we surrender! Who's gonna surrender? You guys are all dead. This is what I was hoping for. <laughs> No, all of you are dead. What the hell are you guys talking about? Both sides were surprised. Both fought in the weak light of torches, nearly down on hands and knees. In the end, the queen emerged victorious. And as soon as she had returned her sword to its sheath, she asked the new prisoners a question that was on everyone's mind. Who the devils are you? The captives looked at each other in disbelief, as if before them stood a ghost. Finally, one of them managed to choke out a response. Your Highness, we're... We're your subjects. Meave recognized the accent at once. The men came from Rivia. But what were they doing so far from home? What the fuck you guys were doing in the mines? According to the prisoner's account, after the Nilfgaardians' invasion of their kingdom, terrible poverty gripped the land. 
seeking bread, some desperate inhabitants had gone to the mountains of Mahakam, engaging in wildcat mining in search of precious ores. Without asking the dwarves what they thought of this. You know yourself, my queen, explained one captured Riv. They guard their treasure real jealous-like, don't care a whit about the suffering of others. They see us starving down in valley and don't lift a stubby finger. Sadly, the Rivians had dug close to existing corridors. When Gabor destroyed the wall that stood between them and the dwarves, they were convinced they were being attacked by monsters, so they raised arms in self-defense. Meave! Tis a tough nut to a ken, said Gabor. But let's nae kid ourselves. These men are thieves, and we must hand them over to the Mahakaman Guard. So they may do what? Sentence them to hard labor, or hang them at once, said Reynard, his usual calm shaken and his voice raised. These are your subjects, Queen. They coveted their neighbor's goods, true, but only because they had knelt themselves. There are like a better solution to this, like long term. Let the ribs leave. Hand the ribs over to the dwarves. Now we're gonna let them leave. For sure. But you guys need a long term solution. I totally understand that. Yeah. I, I can't fault them for what they did. The foreman wished for the knocking to stop, said the queen. And so it shall. As for you, go back to Rivia and tell all their queen shall soon return, leading an army. The grateful Rivs quickly packed up their tools and left the mountains. Meave had no doubt Bruva Hoog would soon learn of the affair and would certainly not approve of her decision. Yet she preferred to face the Elder's wrath than send her subjects to a dwarven prison, or possibly to their death. Yeah. I understand that this is dwarven territory, but not like they were just just straight up stealing. The sound of approaching hoofbeats made me turn to see Reynard spurring on his. They just want to work horse, the land, galloping at a get the resources towards her. Ill tidings, I bring your grace. Clearly, glad tidings never arrive with such urgency. Our scouts captured a Nilfgaardian messenger. He was traveling in disguise and by night. When he realized his capture was imminent, he strove to destroy the letters he carried. We were able to salvage some in parts. Anything of interest? Yes, there is, I fear. Your Majesty, you must listen. Well, don't keep me in suspense, Reynard. You bastard. When, when can I have a Reynard Plus in my deck? I would like to see that. Consider your offer accepted. Direct Meave and her force to the agreed site. We await their arrival. Your reward shall be as agreed. Hail Keritza. A traitor. We might have expected as much. Nilfgaard has shown amply that it abides only by the rules it sets. Since they have not proved able to defeat me in the field, in open battle, they seek other means. Well, I... the thing is, I can probably defeat you in open battle. Well, I know that our fights are kind of cheesy, and we always win. But, like, if we were talking realistically, open battle would be uh, something we just couldn't win with a small army. I suppose the scroll bears no name. It does not, Your Grace. Any other clues? Have we any other leads or clues? None, I fear, Your Majesty. We must be alert. Keep a keen eye on events as they unfold, and exercise great caution in forging new acquaintances. Very well. Eyes wide open, all senses attuned. Yours in particular, Reynard. Of course, my liege. Okay, so we gotta watch out for at least one traitor. And the people are now unhappy? Ah. You bastards. It was not my fault. Come on. Good morale. This. Your Majesty, something dwells in this house. A beast with burning red eyes and frightening growl. Perhaps it guards something worth finding. But only a few brave souls would be able to fit inside. Not all might return. 
<laughs> One man shall suffice, Ike. <laughs> he didn't even join me. Oh man, I guess we're gonna send in some dudes. Paint the deal. Is this any good? Um. Mark a unit and boost it by 10. After 3 turns on turn star, destroy the unit and self. Okay, so this is a hard counter. That can I can they can possibly play as a plus 10 later in the round? If you don't have that as a like plan B. Again, not how we play, don't care. I'll just try to use a more consistent deck, or just a cheesy deck. <laughs> oh, look at that! Would I want to do a puzzle? Ah, oh, no, we can't turn back now. We ran past it by accident. Okay, this looks pr pretty big. So this is a big mine. Oh, 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 okay. Not what I expected. Neve's force near Davor's abyss. Signs of beastly feasting were not hard to find. Countless paw and claw tracks were impressed in the blood-stained snow. Among the boulders, bones picked clean were strewn about. Gascon lifted one from the ground. Empty inside. He said. Something sucked out the marrow. Neve's soldiers feigned indifference to the grisly sight. They marched on. Their stepped rhythm unwavering, a song on their lips. Yet hearing a slight tremolo in their voices, Meave knew they merely sought to drown out their fear. A moment later, a commander's horn sounded, the signal to halt. The queen galloped to the fore of the column and found herself at the edge of a vast, round hole in the ground. She could not see the bottom. Meave drew her reins tight to prevent her mount from taking even one step forward. What is this? A crater? A desiccated lake? Just some hole, like... Let, let's see a for ourselves. A strip variety, Gabor Ooh. explained. Treasures we picked and shoveled for here. Diamonds. Till we happened on the beasts, that is. What now? Orion's a dam. Holds back a lake. If we can break it, water'll rush in. Fill the abyss and the tunnels from which the beasts emerge. Just need to get around the mine first. Way down's on the other side. That's a plan. I like that. Meave squinted and gazed into the distance. Indeed, there was the dam. And at its foot, a swarm of beasts roiled about. Her soldiers gazed at their queen expectantly, their arms at the ready. She knew well they would rush into battle in spite of their fear. Gabor! Meave cried out over the whirling wind. Have you barred here in Mahakam? Of course, Your Grace! Then we shall give them good reason to compose this day on the themes of courage, of heroism, of Lyria! Gee up! And with that cry, the Queen spurred her mount, grabbed a banner, and raising it high over her head, rushed headlong at the horrid swarm. Okay, gain seven charges on your old catapult without it being destroyed. Keep your catapult well maintained on all sides. Oh, okay. Not exactly sure how we're gonna do this. So. Reynard Odo is excellent. Here's the way down. We need to break I love the music. The dam. Love the monster music. Okay. So we should have it well maintained on both sides, apparently. Maybe we're gonna put a drummer here. Again and again and again. Izard. Uh, if we can get uh, these, actually that too, that's a blitz one as well. A 
splits. Army's a waste of time for I hoped we could solve this some other way. You mad? Don't shake that! My spirit's willing and how the these damn boots are killing me. So I'm supposed to play this? Yeah, I know. He's Blue Healer. You can set fire to that. This could hurt. There are adjacent units to this one, game one charge. I see. Could be doable. Bigger they are, easier they are to suck. I just kick this guy's in the back for now. I'm just not sure how to protect this. If it takes one more damage, or Your Grace, like two more damage, approach from all sides. suppose we just have to commit. Damage it by three. Boosting the lowest ally with Delirium or a lot would be really good. At this, we have we have no ways to heal it. I can do Isabel Healer, and maybe the old catapult gets healed. Yeah, we kind of got lucky there. Actually, we should have played next to the catapult. Again and again and again. I'm just playing the back. Actually, I need to hit him as well. I don't have enough charge, do I? Are they sure how many charges you have? Does it have? Okay, I think we're just gonna lose the battle because I don't have enough charge next to the catapult. Alright. I'm gonna do Savio. I can't really shut down the anchors, so that's not gonna be an option. I think we just lose this because. Mm. Fine. Left, right, left. Uh, what now? Fine. Actually, I forgot to use Meat Power. All the boots. I'm not sure if it's possible to win now. But I might just play it out. I guess we're gonna gas coin. Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. I, I just cannot hope to put down more units. Excellent! The dam's about to give. Yeah, but I, I think we might not have a chance here. 
company! Forward march! You can just... I don't know. Kill that. Not really the problem. But we, we need to have seven. And if we can't get seven, there's just no chance. Seven from the start. Okay. So maybe the royal decree is what we need. Well, that, that that's nice, but uh, a trace bomb will ha helps to win. Here's Jesus the way Christ. down. We need to break through and destroy the dam. So we do a royal decree start. Again and again and again. On turn start. So on turn start we need to have two units next to it. And that gave me one charge. You can just have two fetties. Whatever. When's it you ever learn? This might be good enough. Removing the Lyrian banner doesn't really matter. Hopefully he's not gonna move the trebuchet. Oh. Matter too much. I can have a Lyrian side in the front. Just in case he moves it in. We're gonna have a unit there already. Maybe we don't even need uh, to win by points. We just need to have se seven charges on the catapult. That's most likely the case. Your Grace, monsters approach from all sides. Uh, it seems like they are just uh, standing in the back now. Yeah, that's a little annoying. Uh, but I can put it there. Army's wasted time for one like me. Hopefully he only has free damage. Now he did this before. Question is, can Isabel Healer save it? Uh, that's nice. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? It should be enough, theoretically. Do I want to have Neckers in the front too? Ah, I don't mind that. Yeah, we could have done Illyrium a lot. It's pretty good. I can't do the Illyrium a lot because this is, uh, we, we still have Isabel. If I killed Isabel, then we can do it. So if I kill Isbel and we move like these two, then we can do Lyrian Merlot on the catapult so he doesn't die. Die, Neckers! Poor of Neckers, sure. But that's not good enough. I'm trying to kill the catapult, but that's not gonna work. Actually, he's just trying to. Excellent. He's the highest guys. I don't really know. That's what he usually does. Left, right, left, right. Okay, this should be good enough. We're gonna be at seven, just enough to to win this round, win this game. Gascon. And just when you thought things were about to get dull. That bit the white of an eye from our full eagle way. Eh, I don't know. Let's 
go with something like that, maybe. Fire! Fucking necker. Sure. So, we're gonna play Odo. Actually, it doesn't matter. The old catapult just goes up. Alright. Seven. Look at those scanners! Yes! Excellent work! Woo! Boost unit by 10! So and useless! The bard sang of this battle soon after. For no claws or fangs could break through the wall of shields the Lyrians raised that day. And no scales could protect the beasts from the Lyrian stinging arrows and blades. Fight! Do not relent! Let us show these beasts! It is they who should fear us! The queen shouted. In the end, the beasts turned to flee, yet Meave's force cut off any chance of escape. A solid wall of men began to push the monsters ever closer to the edge of Davil's abyss. Pressed from all sides, the horrors began slipping over the precipice, screeching terribly as they fell. Damn, I'm, I'm really doing the dwarves of favor here. Ah, <laughs> uh, I got blood. Silence Thanks. came at last. The queen stood at the edge of the precipice, breathing heavily, leaning on her sword. From the depths of the mine came muted growls and groans. Let's flood the damn hole, hissed Gabor, before any other shite crawls out of it. A rush of icy water suddenly rose, then just as abruptly plunged into the mine, flooding the pit. And where once lay Davor's abyss, <laughs> now lay Davor's pond. Meave descended back into the pass, exhausted and covered in beastly blood, yet also exceedingly pleased. She was one step closer to Dwarven support in the war against Nilfgaard. Yeah, we can hope. What if uh, Brewer just tells me to fuck off after all this? Also, I'm not sure if I would like to swim in that pond, especially deep. It's still a... Um, well, okay. It's an improvement. But damn. Once the Lyrians had put some distance between themselves and the now destroyed monster lair, Meave ordered her men to pitch camp. Then she sent the quartermaster off for food and drink. The soldiers lit campfires, then set aside their weapons. Soon after, lively music and song could be heard throughout the camp. Your Majesty. Reynard said from behind Meave's back. A messenger from the Elder-in-Chief. The Queen turned to see a dwarf in a richly adorned jerkin and a shako with golden seams. She stifled her laugh into a smile and lifted her chin proudly, expecting praise and a pledge of aid in the war against Nilfgaard. My lady, your daring deeds have come to the Elder's attention, said the dwarf in a measured voice. He's positively irate and demands an explanation. <laughs> irate? But why? I and my men, we've aided you greatly. Elder Hoog awaits at the Long Bridge. You'd be ways not to keep him there any length of time. And with that, all the Queen's enthusiasm for a celebration was instantly gone. She waited until the fires expired and the songs died down, then gave the order to march. Ooh. Love the new lake. Oh. 600 wood? Another 600 wood? I might be able to use that for some upgrades. Another 600 wood. Not a lot of upgrades. I can have. But... We can still have some. Meet with Brewer Hoog. Alright. Anyway, this is a good time to take a break, so thanks for watching guys, and see you next time!